I've got a very simple and straightforward way that I implement role-based security within all my Power Apps. And it's not dependent upon any other extra connectors to implement. It's very easy to understand and simple to manage and keep up to date. Let's jump in. So take a look at this. Here's all the list of my features of an application template that I would recommend you have in your application template. The one I want to talk about here is security groups. In any application you build, there will be at least two types of users, normal users and super or admin type of users. I like to have another group which is for developers, myself, or any other co-owners of the app. This will be the screen that, that only dev should use, for example. I want to do this, uh, create this feature with you guys because the next feature we want to implement is this debug feature, and it actually relies on these security groups because you can create a group for testers. Okay, so that's what we'll look at in this video. All right, so if we go to the, into the app on start, we should have a variable, global variable, for our application settings. Now, the only thing we have here is application name, it's a string value, and that value is being passed in to our header component on each of the screens. That should be there at this point. The way that I like to implement security in an application template is assuming that this could be used in many different ways, in many different places. For example, I can't assume that whoever uses this application template, even if it's just me, that it's going to be used with the Dataverse. So there's a lot of things that we can um, tie into for security for, with the Dataverse or SQL Server, SharePoint, and with a SharePoint list, there's a possibility of somebody getting into the SharePoint data and modifying the data, making themselves a super user when they really shouldn't be. So I like to keep things very simple, straightforward within an application template to implement some simple security roles that, to be honest, works really well. And what I do is I create a string of email addresses, each of the security groups. So for example, if I go in here, I will create a property of this global variable called developer emails. And really for apps I create, I'm really the only one in there. So I'll put my email address in there. Okay. And then I will also, so I'll copy and paste that. So we'll have, um, call them app admin emails. So I'll be in there as well. Now what I like to do is separate. If I were to add any, I'd want a semicolon in there. Here, um, I think I will put in tester emails. So I'll be in three of those. So those are the three groups that I create. Now you don't necessarily need a separate group for a tester. You could just make it be the developer email, but there might be a, a time where an app admin, they're experiencing error um, or they're able to create an error on their side that you're not able to create. You might want to have this, maybe you only want one of the app admins and not all of them. So it'd probably be a good idea to actually break this down. And that's what I do in my application templates because we'll need this group for the feature that we'll get to eventually, which is the debugging feature. All right, so we've got these three here. And essentially how we're going to use these is later on here within the app on start, we're going to have variables in which we check to see if they're a part of these. So I might have a global variable called GBL is developer. Developer. GBL is app admin. GBL is tester. True or false value. And that true or false value will be set up based on if the current user can use the user function is found within each of these three things. So let's do that. All right. So GBL, the first one will be the developer is developer. And what we'll need to do here is we'll use the find function and we're going to try to find a string within another string. Also, what I like to do is I like to keep all of these email addresses all lowercase. So I'm going to do a find. I'm going to use the lower keyword just in case that they were entered into the system with uppercase characters in their email address. Email. And we're going to look inside of our GBL app settings, developer emails. What does find return? It returns the ordinal position in which it found a string within another string. In this case, if I'm logged in, my user email is this email and it's looking inside, it would return um, either a zero or a one. Let me copy this over into a label here and let's see what it gives us missing a parenthesis. It's not finding anything because that global variable hasn't been created yet. And we have an error. So let's let's put a uh, parenthesis there and get rid of that one. I think what I'd like to do just for a moment is comment out this line. And I want this variable to be initialized. So I'm going to hit run on start. I'm going to go back over to this label here. So I'm going to make copy of my label and let me just see what is inside 
user email at this point. There we go. So there's my email address. I'm going to make a copy of that, paste it. All right. So in this, I'm going to look at what's in the developer emails. Okay. So the find is going to look for this inside of this, and it's going to return which ordinal position it found that at. So if there were two email addresses in here and I was looking for the second one, it might be something like 15 or something other than one. So I just wanted to show you that just so you, you see what's going on here. Now, if it didn't find the string at all, what it's going to do is it's going to return a blank value. So it's either going to return a numeric value or a blank. So let's go back to our app on start and we need to account for that. So really, we, we don't really care about where it is it found that string within the other string. What we care is if it returned a blank value or not. There is a function called is blank, but if it's blank, they're not a developer. So let's use the bang operator. We could just say not. Everybody has their uh, their own preference. Uh, what's great about Power Apps is it gives you the option of either using the, the exclamation point or the not keyword. That's, that's nice. I'm gonna click on um, format text. There we go. I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna run this code and I'm gonna go over here to this screen and I'm gonna see what's in here. GBL is developer. True. So it thinks I'm a developer, which I am. So that worked well. It worked as intended. So now we just need to do the same thing with the others, the other roles here. I am going to copy. I'm going to paste that and I'm going to say is app admin app admin emails that should set us up for that one and we'll say is tester tester emails okay so in this case we have three separate boolean values so we know if they should have access to something or not. Now, what would be cleaner is if we were to set this up as a single variable. So like how we have for app settings, or we have for uh, our theme, or our nav items. Instead of having three different global variables sitting out there, I think it would be cleaner if we just combine them in one. But it was sort of important to break it out so you guys can see how that was all done. So let's create a global here that will replace those three. Global user access. Okay, we'll set this up like a record. And we'll have three values, three named values, and we'll say is developer. Very good, we'll do a comma is app admin colon and we'll grab this comma is tester colon and we'll go with this and paste it right there now I'm gonna hit format text make sure it looks all pretty now what I'm gonna do since we don't need those variables anymore we could just comment that out for now and eventually we'll remove it. I don't like to rip out code and uh, <laughs> until it's been sitting there for a while and I know I don't need it. Sometimes you uh, want to bring code back. Let's say if we had an error while using this new variable, we might want to bring the other ones back for some reason. Okay, so now we have that. I'm gonna run this app on start and um, I don't need these anymore, okay? Now it's going to complain here because there is no variable by that name anymore. So I'm going to say GBL user, yeah, user access dot is developer. Very good. Now I should show up as true for all three, but let's say is app admin. Very good. And this one will be is tester. Where this is really important, let's say through all of these screens, Almost every user that you share this with can access the full app. They can add, edit data, whatever they need to do in this application. But if there's 
something that only an app admin should do. An easy and simple, straightforward way to do this is go over to the, let's say we've got a, a settings screen. And from that screen, you'd have all your app admin buttons that would go to app admin screens that would allow them to do special things. And if a normal user were to go to that screen, they wouldn't see anything because you would be hiding all the buttons that they shouldn't have access to. So what you would do is, let's say we've got a button here. Let's say this button goes to a, a certain screen that adds and removes drop down items for the rest of the application. You'd have in the on select that navigate function that would go to that screen. However, for this button, we'd go down here into the visible property and you would use that global variable user access dot is app admin. There you go. If they're not an app admin, that button simply won't be there and they won't be able to get to that other screen. That is a fairly simple and straightforward way to implement security within a Power Apps app without involving any type of backend or Azure AD or Dataverse access, any of that type of thing. This will allow us to implement the testing and debugging feature, which we can cover next. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.